This will be the largest and most detailed video about the nuclear tests at the Semipalatinsk nuclear test site. You won't find this kind of information on the internet. I will tell you about those grim events that took place back then in the USSR. This is the second part. If you have not seen the first part, I advise you to do so. The link to the video will be in the attached commentary. So. The first Soviet nuclear explosion was detonated at 7 a.m. on August 29, 1949. No one warned the people. A few minutes before the explosion, the school bell rang, and the students were taken outside. And they should have been hidden. Alas, the teachers just didn't understand what was going on. Windows were flying out of the houses, and stoves were cracking. There are still monuments in the city of those times ruined buildings. Solid dirt and cockroaches. The tests near Semipalatinsk were kept strictly secret, but already on September 3rd, the Americans received information about a successful explosion. Analysis of air samples taken by a U.S. Weather Weather Service airplane near Kamchatka showed the presence of isotopes indicative of a nuclear explosion. On September 23rd, President Harry Truman announced what had happened in the Kazakhstani steppe. The Americans were sure that the USSR would develop an atomic bomb no earlier than 1952, but by no means in 1949. Therefore, the tests at the Semipalatinsk test site took the Americans by surprise now the USSR was equal to the United States in military power. The results of the test of the first atomic bomb RDS-1 created in the USSR were of special importance, reads the monograph Semipalatinsk test site, edited by the famous scientist and radiochemist Vadim Lagachev and published by the Federal Department of Medical, Biological and Extreme Problems of the Russian Ministry of Health in 1997. Firstly, only they could give a definitive answer to the question of the correctness of approaches to the development of the projectile, which became the first domestic sample of a new type of weapon based on the use of a chain fission reaction in a certain mass of a nuclear explosive plutonium-239. Second, the very fact of such a test was of great political and military strategic importance, which was to end the American monopoly on the possession of nuclear weapons and to enable future military defense parity between the two leading nations of the world the USSR and the United States. During the test, a curious thing happened. The shock wave destroyed the metal cages, releasing the white mice. They scattered all over the experimental field. Nuclear workers had to drop everything, catch the rodents and put them back in their cages. The search was made easier by the fact that white mice were clearly visible against the burnt grass. There were plenty of problems in other areas as well. For example, Physicist Yevgeny Spitnev called the conditions in Semipalatinsk fantastically bad, accommodation, food everything was very badly organized. Complete unsanitary conditions, dirt and cockroaches. Moreover, during the first experimental detonation it was decided to ignore adverse meteorological conditions and conduct the test in rainy weather with sharp gusts of wind. As a consequence, areas far beyond the test site were contaminated. And the maximum dose recorded near the village of Dolan exceeded 200 Rentgen. In the early period of testing, 1949 to 1951, no one was particularly interested in public safety. On October 18, 1951 in Semipalatinsk the first air nuclear explosion took place. For the first time in the USSR a nuclear bomb was dropped from an airplane. And in 1953, the most powerful above-ground explosion took place. For security purposes, the authorities evacuated people from the territory of the sector with a radius of 120 kilometers 2,250 people were evicted and over 44,000 cattle were moved out. The military took them away in trucks. After the explosion they decided to evacuate the residents of a Bay settlement, which was in the radioactive contamination zone. Of 1,620 people, 191 were not evacuated in time. They were exposed to radiation. 
The lack of experience during the first nuclear tests resulted in the loss of some information about the destructive factors of nuclear explosions. 191 people were exposed to radiation after the most powerful explosion at the Semipalatinsk test site in 1953. Outside the experimental field due to exposure to the light radiation of a nuclear explosion people lost their vision retinal burn injuries or temporary blindness. Sometimes it also led to complete blindness. In 1950-1960s it was believed that the existing safety measures are sufficient, so the residents of the districts adjacent to the test site are not warned about the time of testing in advance. That is how the public matured in their distrust, and as a result an anti-nuclear movement was formed. My family was struck by that landfill with a combined harvester, says Yakubovskia, activist, doctor of otolaryngology. My mother died in 1953. She died in the prime of life because of cancer. I myself all my life treated by hematologists and other specialists. I did not allow myself to give birth. I was forced to leave Semipalatinsk because I was at risk of disability. Hardly anyone can say exactly how many people were affected then. There was a security clearance. My mother died after an operation for stomach cancer. And on the death certificate they wrote, acute heart failure. According to the documents the person should have died of anything but radiation-induced diseases. They started talking about it out loud only after the breakup of the Soviet Union. A lake with monsters. In the 1950s and early 1960s, the world was rocked by hundreds of powerful nuclear and thermonuclear explosions, from a few kilotons to tens of megatons. This brought the planet to the brink of catastrophe. Explosions underground were recognized as the least of the evils in this situation. March 17, 1960 The Central Committee of the Communist Party and the Council of Ministers decided to hold a special mining operation at the Semipalatinsk test site for underground testing. Already in August under strict secrecy and away from supply bases in the Dijalin Mountains the tunneling of special tunnels began. Only one year later, on October 11, 1961, underground testing was conducted. Vitaly Bakardin, a participant of the first explosions, recollected that the nuclear charges were not placed deep underground but were placed inside the mountain. To do this, a horizontal, very straight at it was laid at its base and ended below the top. It was punctuated by miners from among the freelance staff who had been thoroughly vetted by the KGB. They drilled deep pits in the rock, put explosives in them and blew them up. They corrected the irregularities with jackhammers. That way, they created a hole in the mountain up to one kilometer long, three meters wide and high. It was found that the effects of a nuclear explosion were quite different from those of an experimental TNT explosion, there were no such visible cracks through which large amounts of gases could escape. There was also no need to use an insulating gas mask in the attic. Three to four hours after the explosion the radioactive noble gases began to disappear from the explosion center. A second underground nuclear explosion was conducted on February 2, 1962 with the same characteristics as the American blank explosion. However, the test participants saw significant differences, there was no release of radioactive gases into the atmosphere and no formation of a sinkhole. It became clear that the effects of an underground nuclear explosion depend mainly on the characteristics of the rock and mostly on its humidity and gassiness. Here is how the explosion looked like through the eyes of serviceman Bacardin, as if sighing, the mountain swelled slightly and immediately settled down. The snow lying on its sides went down, but not all of it. The red-hot gases from the thickness of the mountain escaped for some reason only through its top, the snow cap lying on it instantly turning to steam. And a white cloud of steam rushed from the top into the sky, and it suddenly turned whitish all at once. It was whitish because all the stones lying on it from the high temperature and water vapors immediately took on the same color as the stones in a steaming Russian bath. But the consequences of the explosion did not end there. 
Ten seconds passed, or maybe more, and all the inhabitants of Point G felt quite a strong shaking of the ground and artificial earthquake. Soon the era of aerial testing was a thing of the past. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Write in the comments about what else interesting you can tell about this video. See you in the new video.